Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel, Delicious Budgeting. My name is Anna and this is my dog Marshmallow. So I realize I haven't done a life update video in like over six months and a lot has happened since then. A lot of good things luckily. When I first started doing my life updates video, like when I watched them back to back, like the first one, I felt like just everything was going wrong. Then the next video, okay, we got some good, bad things going on. And then the next video, I thought I was gonna go back to work. Still don't know yet, that will be in part two. So I'm gonna have a part two of this video. So I wanna dedicate this video to Marshmallow's health because a lot has happened since then. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I focus on content such as beauty, lifestyle, and how to save money. So if you're interested, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also, let's give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to turn on notifications. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. And let's just go ahead and get started. Quick recap if you haven't seen like the previous video. So my dog, Marshmallow, I had him since I was 18. So about like four years ago, we found out that he was blind. He had a detached retina. And then around December 2020, January 2021, we started noticing like he was like squinting a lot. And he just like wasn't acting himself. And you know, that's what everything that was going on a lot of places like booked out like three months in advance and some people are saying well that's not really like an emergency but he should be seen so i just felt torn like i was literally calling like surrounding states which i'm in california and i was willing to make the drive anywhere i just want him to be seen because he just did not seem right and then finally we found a place like 40 minutes from us that was gonna take him in they said it might be a six hour wait but i was like you know what i don't care when they seen him, they took him right away. Like his eyes were red, so there's like blood in his eyes. And just like a long story short, like we had to do like so much testing for him. Like literally we were there like every week, sometimes twice a week. And each visit was like $190. So it was like really expensive. And like his eye pressure was high. That's what they were able to tell. And then also we just got him like medication, like to ease the pain. And then also he had to take like eye drops. Like I was getting like five medications a day and they kept like swapping out medications like almost like each visit which is like really hard for me to like you know keep control keep supply of because like some they would like keep and then some they would like switch out and i was trying to get through chewy because through the pharmacy is like really expensive like so it was just so financially draining and like luckily like me my husband my parents were like chipping in on the bills but like i said just like if nothing went wrong on the visit it was like still 180 dollars like almost 200 bucks and if they did have to do testing, six to 800. Like, it was just so much. Like, I could not, like, put anything to savings. I was going, like, negative. So it was just, like, a really stressful time. And then also, too, like, I'm trying to do my best to, like, figure out what's going on, what's gonna make him feel the best. And the conversation of removing his eyes got brought up. And I just instantly, like, started crying. Like, I just thought that was, like, an intense surgery. I just felt so like bad like I don't want to talk about it too much I don't want to cry on camera but like instantly I would just be like waterworks and my mom would have to like take over and talk to the doctor because I was just like not emotionally like stable hey everyone so we were editing the video and I totally forgot to mention so like towards his like last few visits his eye pressure was going like high and then low like it just was never like stable and I asked like would removing his eyes like prevent this because I felt like the medication wasn't doing anything and there was like literally like three or four visits that I can count where something new was going on with his eyes so like I said it was just like a really hard thing to like process and think of him without like any eyes but I just had to like really like think to myself well each visit if his eyes are giving him problems and he is blind like they're just like cosmetic at this point so I was like so would removing his eyes like be the best option to move forward and then they were kind of hesitant because I felt like at the beginning of our visits they were kind of pushing for that and I just like wasn't ready I just felt like that was just such like a intense surgery to like suggest and I just kind of thought like well his eyes aren't doing anything for him but causing him pain he they said like something about he's gonna have like a hard time identifying like night and day because even though he can't see he might be able to like determine like shadows like when it's day or nighttime so I was just kind of like well each visit like something's wrong with his eyes like wouldn't it just be like best to do that and that way like he doesn't have to go through this I remember so. i had some money saved up for a car and i thought his surgery was going to be that much and i said i don't care like if that's what it takes he can take my car money like i just want him to be well like i just love marshmallows so much like 
I just, I would have done anything at that point. So they were just kind of like, well, just think about it. And finally, I kind of got like on board with the possibility, like, you know, if that's in his best interest. And then they were kind of saying like, well, given his age, which he's only eight years old, they're like, we have to do like another testing on him to see if he's like a good candidate. And just like all of that. So it was just like really stressful to think about, but Luckily, so I thought it was gonna be like $8,000. I don't know where I pulled that number from. And they actually gave us a close to 3,000. So, I mean, that's still like a lot of money, but I was like, oh, okay, that's like 5,000 cheaper than what I thought. So we just like literally, we're gonna get our tax refunds back. We just like put that away. Like that's still a way like for his possible eye surgery, just so in case he needs it, like we have it. So luckily like that's good. Anywho, so we're gonna fast forward to October. So like I said, We've been kind of like spacing it out at this point, like every two months going in and they're just kind of like, okay, his pressure's low. Oh, and then his eyes were shrinking. So his eyes were getting smaller. I'm just like, what is going on? Like at this point, I just feel like they're giving us like medication and eye drops just to like have him deal with the pain. But I'm like, what's the actual problem here? Like I could never get a straight answer. Like to this day, I don't know what the problem was. During his October visit, they said his eye pressure levels were good. His eyes have not shrunk anymore. The medication that he's on, they think that's doing like really well from him. He doesn't seem to be in pain. So then they said, we don't want to see you until a year. So I was so happy to hear that because I was just like, finally, because like literally every single month they're paying hundreds. I kid you not, hundreds of dollars for his visits, his medications. So I was just so happy not having like call into work and just all that. So I was so happy and I'm happy like Marshall was like doing better. Marshall is like so like tired right now. And they did say during his October visit that if his eyes do continue to shrink, which honestly I'm kind of seeing like this eye shrink a bit. They said they will have to remove his eyes because his like fur is gonna start poking him and cause him to squint and like cause pain. So I'm just like trying like really hard to make sure his eye drops are making it in and just like keeping an eye on him. Like in the end, if that's what has to happen, like I said, they're just cosmetic at this point. It'd be like really hard nevertheless, but I just have to do what's like most comfortable and what's in his best interest. I just had a year, we found out like, you know, whatever is going on with his eyes, like I said, I still don't have an answer. He has high blood pressure. He has like a thyroid issue. I was just like, oh my gosh, like poor Marsh. But luckily like that was all good. So you know, October passes, everything's good. He's on all his medication. No more problem with his eyes. He's starting to like be himself again. And you know, he like two months of like good times. And then December rolls around. Remember just getting off work, like I said, I work from home 100%. And he was in the backyard and there is like a big dog next door. And he likes to bark at them, him and Coco, they think like they're big dogs as well. And I was like, Marshmallow, like stop barking at him. And then all of a sudden Marsh just like cried. He just started crying. And I look on the side of the house and Marshmallow's like mouth is like stuck. And I just instantly thought, the dog bit him or the dog like has him in his mouth right now because there is like a little hole and like we did put like some like planners and like bricks there like so you know that gap is filled so i was just like so scared and i'm like home alone or he's on his way home from work and i just like pick up mars and i just see blood everywhere and i was like oh my god and i went to panic mode i had no idea what was going on or if he got bit or what and then you know, I'm just like calling her. I was like, where are you? March got bit. Like, I think the dog bit him like through the fence, like through the little hole. Like I just had no idea what happened. It was like all over his stomach, his paw. And then luckily it was like, I'm pulling up right now. And I was just like panicking. We clean his wound, we wrap it up and I put him on the ground and then Marsh is limping. Like he's just like doing this and like hopping on all three legs. And like, he likes to follow me everywhere. So he's like following me everywhere. And I was like, no Marsh, no. And, I just started like crying. So I was just like, why is this happening to Marsh? Like, why can't he just have like a good few months? Like, he just never has it easy. I started calling like all the emergency vet clinics and they're like, oh, he should definitely be seen, but we can't see him or it's not life threatening. But yeah, you should definitely take him somewhere. And I kid you not, I was calling a place like super far away again and like everywhere was busy or they're not accepting new patients and I just felt like so defeated again because 
I'm trying to be a good pet owner. I'm trying to be responsible. And it was just like so hard to be in that place again. I thought we were like over it. And then finally this place that opened at like six o'clock at night, we're like, oh, bring him in. So we did. We are waiting in the car for like 40 minutes. And then I brought like Marsh some treats and he's like all perking up. And then the vet technician came out to the car and she goes, so there's two dogs waiting to be in surgery. We only have one doctor. You're probably gonna be here till seven in the morning. We're like, oh, she's looking at Marsh. And then all of a sudden like, Marsh just acts like nothing happened. He's all like almost trying to jump out of the car to like sniff the lady. Like, he just like loved her. And he was able to put like full weight on his paw again because I told her she was limping. And she said like to have him go home, remove the bandage, soak it in hydrogen peroxide, clean the wound, and to like, you know, wrap it up, keep it dry. So I was like, okay, we take him home. He will not let anyone like touch his paw at all. So I'm like trying to like bandage him up again, trying to clean it. And he's just like not having it. So I called my parents. I kid you not, it took four adults to get the bandage on him, so Ernie's holding him, my dad's the one putting the gauze on him, my mom's singing happy birthday to him because he loves that song, gets all happy, and then I'm on the side distracting him and like feeding him treats as we go just so he's not like paying attention, and I finally get the gauze on and I was just so happy and he's like limping and I was like okay maybe just like not used to it and I just like could not sleep that week take him to the vet and then luckily she said she doesn't believe he was bitten by a dog it doesn't seem like a dog wound at all it seems like he got his paw like snagged underneath the fence or maybe like a nail or something sharp so just in case she just prescribed him antibiotics for two weeks so I was like great another medication so I was getting like three pills and his two eye drops and I was just like, oh man, Marge, can you just like get a break over here? But yeah, luckily, and then luckily she said, no need to wrap it up, it needs to be dry, you need to keep it clean, just let it breathe. So I was like, finally, cause he was fighting me on that gauze, but he did have to wear an e-collar cone like 24 seven. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably knew this through my Instagram story. So definitely check me out there if you haven't already. So that way you can be updated in real time. So I noticed I haven't done a life update video in like six months or so, and so much has happened since then. But I thought Marshmallow just deserved his own video because like I said, a lot has happened since then with his health. Luckily we're going to a positive direction. But yes, I will have a part two of a life update video coming next week. We'll cover more of a variety of topics. Lots of good things luckily, so everything is good here. Marshall, he's like so tired right now, he's so funny. Anywho, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment box down below what you would like to see next. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Also, let's give this video a thumbs up and be sure to turn on notifications. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. And I'll see you all in my upcoming videos. Bye everyone.